be trying to pay them out of. Yeah, that's definitely true. This whole convoy came from the fund. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. Yeah. Hi, welcome back uh, to the second hour here of Burning Crowns today. Yay! So, um, yeah, let's go. I want to talk a little bit more about the auditors and what they plan to do. Is that cool? Or, Count Ronald, do you want to do something beforehand? I would like to greet the rest of the guests. I'm curious as to who came. Yeah. Did so, anyone else of note come? And if not, I would definitely like to at least have a scene where the trader from Restov shows up and I'm like, well, this isn't nearly as much food as I thought it would be. Uh, good thing I secured that, you know. Hunting. Hunting. Maybe that's the intro scene while you throw somebody else at me? Yeah, okay. I like uh, that. So yeah, I'm like looking over an enormous cart full of food and then I'm looking around at all the people here and I'm like, well, is this isn't nearly enough. And I like drop <laughs> a bag of coins into his head and I'm like, you should probably bring more next time. Yeah, uh, he's he's kind of like looking around, and, and actually, I think he mentioned something like, "Sorry that with the um, there hasn't been as as many men um, tending the fields this year. Uh, it's been kind of rough back up north this year. <clears throat> a um, yeah. seems like a blight has taken to um, some of the um, cabbages. Signs of the apocalypse. My cabbages." My cabbages! The cabbage blight. That guy was the best. All right, so I'm just like, well, you head back to wherever you're going to and bring back more food next time. I'll fish for a logistics roll at the end of the next week. How about that, buddy? And I slap him <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> and he's looking there, weighing the, the coins and opens it. And he's like, yeah, that'd be great. Because uh, it's a good deal. You paid him handsomely. Yeah. Um, As Count Swan will do. Yeah. It's called trickle-down economics. That's how I roll. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Have you, you haven't noticed yet that he's just like, as long as we keep moving the money around, it'll just keep coming back to me. Yeah. We'll I see. don't plant seeds in the ground. I don't create. I'm just moving the money around. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> so um no there's nobody of of like import came in fact like the news that comes in with the um with the reports is saying that um a lot of people are are like back up in brevoy right now a lot of people are kind of struggling um it seems to be that um the blight isn't just uh in your lands it's like a lot of people are having some kind of issues with uh okay. With with food growth as well as just the the whole um, wars the wars have just kind of like fatigued out a lot of people right now. People are kind of like like it's it's very much like a building year. You know what I mean? Like people are like really trying to just like focus on their stuff own stuff right now. And with the upcoming um, King's Moot, um, people are just really unsure and you know can't really can't really devote their themselves to this as they they would like to. Yeah, were any additional troops sent? Uh, you didn't actually request any um, further troops other than um, the ones you got from Gares, right? Um, well, technically that was Manning, and my or request Manning. for troops, he got it before it like reached some larger land, right? He like intercepted it, and he just sent his people. Yeah, no, uh, I think I think those are those are the men that basically he overruled. Uh, sending in more troops. Like, no, I oh, I can solve this. Here's my men. All right. So I if mean, you want, I'm if you can bring it up with him, if you can bring it up with him, but you want more men. But so like you got it. But that's what it was. I mean, yes, I will have a messenger send back a letter requesting even more men and outlining the situation where we're outnumbered two to one. Uh, well, and that uh, these bandits, they're not like they have a very serious defensive fortification from which they are sorting. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Do you we can you want to do that now, or do you want to meet with the auditors? Uh, I definitely would like to, to write that letter now. To is that no problem? Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just trying letter. to factor in how how expensive their time is. Okay. I mean, again, I don't know if you were here for well, this. Well, I thought but... I'm meeting with them for him. Yeah, you're you're peace advising them on my behalf. Uh, but okay, here's the thing. 
either they get in the line of what I believe Abadar is, or I kill them for heretics because I'm the chosen one and I can do that kind of stuff. That is true. You can do that. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but I believe it. And I'm rapidly losing faith in their faith. Look, all I know, of, all uh, I know is that Demetrius definitely thinks that if Swan is killing people for heretics, he definitely thinks he's the chosen one, and that's all I know. <laughs> uh, Got to faith. So, I will, I will, yeah, I will write a letter to. I guess it'll specifically be to Kevin Manning if he's going to be intercepting my my post. Might as well just address it to him anyway. Yeah. Say, you know, we're at number two to one. They have greater fortifications. Uh, the special forces unit that was sent with us is making religious. What is it? Secular or non secular? What thing are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you're making choices based on religious law rather than. I'm making secular decisions. Yeah, the the special forces are going off script and making secular decisions. Like we need a serious backup here to keep them in line. Love Count Swan, His Eminence. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for duress. You seem very competent. Is it signed in lip liner? No. <clears throat> but that's my that's my sending. On the sure. way back to the auditors, right, I want to let's, oh. let's make that let's make that roll. Let's make that oh, roll. Is that Just, a roll? Yeah. Yeah. You're requesting aid, man. Okay. How, how am um, I? What kind of roll is this? It's probably not logistics, but. You are calligraphy. Isn't it calligraphy? Just right? it was calligraphy. calligraphy no, it's composition. You're Formal you're intent. No, no, no. In compositions for writing a play, uh, your intention is, is to right. persuade him for more men. Yes, my intent is persuasion, not to write a letter. No, but I'm pretty sure it was yes, like but, flat. but the task is by writing a letter. Yes. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not writing a formal request. Okay, hold on, Literally, hold on. Writing a letter. Communication with religious, royal, or governmental bodies. Calligraphy is a formalized style as handwriting that is required for communicating with religious, royal, or governmental bodies. Yeah, um, we, se we separate the three. What I, the only reason I bring this up is because we forced Demetrius to not make a persuasion roll when he did this. He had hmm. to make a calligraphy roll. Yeah, right. Yeah, and he was also the writing. Thing separates between calligraphy and persuasion, right? Uh, like a socially awkward person who has nothing for persuasion because they're like, I, I, I think you should totally do this thing. I want you to, but would then like compose a very well written and well formulated reasoning for that in writing, right? That's the difference. So you could be very charming with persuasion, but being convincing on paper is calligraphy. All right. Then, in that sense, can I swap out my right skill, which I picked up from General, for calligraphy? Because it what it does it's very odd that you know I would be able to write, but I wouldn't be able to convince people in writing. Right, it's, it uh, depends on who you're writing to. Calligraphy is for communicating with governmental, church institutions, and royal institutions, whereas writing is just like general all-purpose. Well, writing. apparently, the only thing I write now will be. <laughs> Official proclamation. <laughs> Dinner shall be served at eight. Yeah, Sealed I would be. One. No, I'd be willing to let you trade uh, some of uh, your if you if you boosted up writing out of just like opening it or whatever. If your intentions were in order to write eloquently, then that would make sense to put it over, and you could put some right. stuff over in the composition right now. Because like yeah, like, not or calligraphy. I know I said that again. I'm sorry. Yeah, composition would be like right? writing a good book. Yeah, just I, I know. I think of I think of composition as a playwright. I'm an idiot. Uh, just I don't. It's in my head. Hamilton. I don't know. <laughs> um. Uh, so let's see here. So yeah, if you wanted to move a little bit of that around, so you have a little bit of a calligraphy instead of write because of this, because you didn't, because we did, all didn't know. That's kind of like how it's supposed yeah, to go. It's a little odd. Uh, apparently, I guess I'm not very good at just writing letters to people. Uh, I I would be like, hey guy how's it going instead i have to be like dear acquaintance it is i title 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 how are you upon this day the market day of the letter's arrival yeah uh i would almost certainly love to fork in bandit wise court wise lord wise <laughs> uh and persuasion uh i wouldn't let you fork in bandit wise Really? Yeah. Cause for yeah. explaining that we're outnumbered by bandits and we really need help killing these bandits? Yeah, that doesn't... 
Okay. All right. I feel like that doesn't. You're not dealing with bandits. Yeah, you're not dealing with bandits, and there's nothing necessarily about that. Yeah. What kind of obstacle am I looking at? Uh, two. Really? Yeah, crush it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you say crush it, but I've seen the dice today, and they're not good. Yeah, Yeah, talk about crushing that barely meeting. Six dice. Why is it easier? So here's, I have a question. I know. So you got it. You still got it, but why is it easier to convince people with writing that it is not? I feel like we're doing something wrong. No, it's not easier. What Niren said is is in the the way that society works now, um, persuasion does not mean convincing. It means your ability to vocally persuade one person one-on-one. That's why calligraphy is a separate stat because you have to actually be good at expressing ideas in the written word in order to convince someone via the written word. Okay. I am very good at talking. I am less good at writing in the real world. In the real world, if I was to try and convince someone of something, it would be a bad idea for me. So is this a link test thing? Um, No. So to to write... These are literally the two different types. I think you can make it a link test if you want. It's, I think it's completely up to how you want to do this. Probably. See, the, the thing is, and I like to go back, when, when people ask me this in my other groups, I like to use the example of, like, think of Ocean's Eleven for a moment. If, if, if uh, Ocean was to do, like, a heist, and he was to convince a god, uh, like, a god, let me in here. If he was to go up to his face and tell him, hi, I'm the Shah of Iran, let me in. Right? He would be like, no, go away. What do you do? Get out. But if you get like a piece of paper in your hand that looks official, people are more inclined to believe that and vice versa. The, the thing is that persuade is not the root of persuading people. It is the ability to persuade people vocally one-on-one. I think also what you could do is you could just make it a harder uh, test. I think those are the two ways of doing it. It's like ob one is the act or ob two is the act of writing the letter. And now there's, Additional to ob uh, to convince this guy, or just make it a link test with persuasion. But you I could think- totally make it a link test, right? It's like I can persuade you because I am persuasive, and but whether or not I can convey that in a manner, uh, the manner that the court would find palatable, would then be contingent on my calligraphy. Um, but I think we should just make a decision and and go with it. Cause- or we could bench it for now since we've made the roll, and we can come back to it later because we're not going to make another calligraphy roll, I assume. No. Um, that's what I'm saying. I think we should just go with the calligraphy role we made right now, and we can do something different. And we can okay. move on. Yeah. So you def- So you wrote up your um. Yeah. So you you wrote up your arguments asking for more men, uh, given the circumstances. All right. Yep. And um, when the when the caravan heads out, they're going to send out that letter with you. On my way to the auditors, I'm going to stop Oleg. Sure. He looks super fucking stressed. Um. He's like touching his his one arm. Remember that's it was like in. Oh, actually, I need to roll a health test for him. One second. Does he need to see the doctor? Uh, that's just this is a part of his recovery test. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, he says it's not. I think it's a pretty oh, big it's deal. Not keep highest four. It's just greater than four. He's fine. So he doesn't have a cast anymore? Or a sling? No, it's in a sling. No, it's no longer in a sling, but he definitely favors his other arm. Okay. Right. Oleg, how are you feeling? Great. Just great. He's not great. I meant you know, physically. Uh, you know, just more people in my fort. You know? Uh, just not... Your eminence. Oleg, I would like to have a little gathering in the next few days. Two or three. Uh, where we speak about the future of this community. Perhaps you and I can sit down together with some of your friends and you know. cash out. What exactly is happening here? What will happen in the future? I understand you have some concerns. Yeah. <laughs> as Arastilians, you have a strong sense of community, as far as I understand it. Correct? You wish to be left alone and govern yourself, but when you need help you have called for me and i am here with the ability to change the policy of the brevoian government i think this is a rare opportunity for your people to get a direct line with someone who writes laws so let's sit and talk 
lunch in three days, shall we say. Uh, he looks at you and he's like, that would be great. Thank you. He, he says, prepared for the chance of a lifetime, my friend. And I slap him on the back, but not on his injured arm. Yeah. Slap him right on his injured arm. If you could, if if you could see to the, the food that's being brought in, there's several large wagons. And, of course, the hunters are continuing to bring in smoked meats. Yes, your grace. And your payment for the efforts is on the caravan as well. I marked it aside. It's a large chest of gold. Thank you. I'm sure that would be more than enough to cover the costs of uh, our business. He says with a ambiguous tone. Gritting like, y'all crazy. Yeah, it's very, very uh, double-edged tone. Uh, I will head to where we are currently stashing the auditors. Stash. Um, they're probably no legs house. Uh, yeah. I, so was I already talking to them? Yeah. Or? So like we come in and like you have like you're like mid conversation with them, and so the the auditors were all very like, "Are you sure he's the chosen one?" Like I'm not. I don't. I mean, first glances, he it's not that well, great. Well, that's what I wanted to do is like before Count Swan sees them again, I wanted to get them on my side and present a united front. Okay. Um, and before I do this, I want to know whether or not this is going to be oratory or suasion so that I can cast a boon and open end one of those skills. Uh, is, is three people enough of a crowd to be oratory? Well, before you ask for what skill this is, can you please describe your intent? Yeah, yeah, my intent is to convince the three of them that, uh, like, I, that, like, I am on the right path, um, that, like, my visions from Avadar are, you know, the, the truth, uh, and that, uh, we need, like, right now, the most important thing, uh, is that ensuring that Swan gets on board and that Swan believes so that he can take his rightful place. It does sound like he's saying, this guy's the chosen one, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, like, this guy's the chosen one, but the real thing I'm saying is, like, yes, we might need to still watch to know for sure. Like, nothing has been confirmed yet, I will admit it. But right now, the most important thing is not us auditing him and seeing whether he's the chosen one. Right now, the most important thing is getting Swan on board with being the chosen one. Like... Be be there and watch for the signs, but instead of like obviously testing him, make sure we need to get him like more fully on board and to accept his place first. Got it. Okay. Uh, we don't want to scare him off, is what you're trying to say. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Assuasion. It's in our best immortal souls that we don't piss off the chosen one. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Um. So I think the way like we see this, um, you can it, fork oratory for this. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. But uh, so I think like, you know, we, uh, um, uh, Father Demetrius brings these men inside and while he's doing it, he whispers a prayer. Um, he, uh, he whispers a, a prayer to, uh, to Lord Abadar to allow his, his uh, tongue, uh, his, his foolish mortal tongue to uh, be uh, eloquent and to, to bestow the lords of the Almighty onto the ears of, um, of his followers and to show them the path. Uh, and I would like to use a boon to open up my suasion. Uh, which is an object faith roll. All right, make it so. Uh, modifiers none, Arthur none, obstacle two. Nice. Yay. Wow, I am continually bad at uh, faith, but I'm still going to spend, uh, even though it's pointless i'm not going to roll it i'm just going to spend a fate to reroll a traitor um and then uh as I, I bring them inside to like the main um hall area and like have them sit down um like probably like bring them some water mm-hmm. I, uh, I say um gentlemen over the past number of weeks I have resisted the will of Abadar 
and I found myself bereft of the gifts that he bestows upon me, his chosen, the ability to work his power into the world in the form of miracles. You're aware of my abilities, are you not? Yes, we've been receiving quite a few reports of your uh, divine connection. Yes, but I am only able to do these things through the will of his holiness, the Lord who holds the keys. And at the beginning of this venture, I found myself at odds with his will and so unable to work his power. Only once I came to the realization, the revelation of who Count Swan is, the one who will take us through the darkness to come, he who will shelter us from the storm. Only then was the power returned to me. Now, I don't claim to have evidence yet of his holiness. I think the evidence is yet to come. As with Josepha, the king who was found, he must find his place. He must first believe. And right now, he needs support in doing so, not testing and questioning of his right and his position in the Lord's eyes. Um, and yeah, I'd like to make this suasion test. That was really good. That was really good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, three. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff to fork into this. Yeah, you uh, do. I've got Avatar Wise, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one. Religious history and oratory. Actually, hold on, I'm sorry. Before we do that, um, I think actually I might want to make this a versus test. Okay, um, that's fine. Yeah, I feel I mean, like they aren't... Um, they need. I th I feel like the better way of putting this is that they they actually do want something. They w they want to convince you that um, they they do need proof still. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, and that while it's wh uh, well and good, uh, you you know the religious text as well as we do. The it is um the chosen one. To be a chosen one, you must be tested constantly. If he can't hold up to the scrutiny of our tests, how could he be the chosen one for the end of times when the tests are not voluntary? It's basically what I'm trying to get at. The the idea yeah, that no, tests, that's a, challenges it, aren't yeah. It's a so, good point. Like um, if he can't he can't stand up to the scrutiny of of the believers, how can he lead us through this uh, dark time yeah. to come? Yeah, and I think um I think one of them actually kind of just mentions yeah for all we know you might be the chosen one oh. and, um, so we're gonna roll we're gonna roll a versus test here for all we know i could be the chosen one okay Mason uh, could be the chosen one oleg could be the chosen one do you want me to roll first and set your ob or vice versa? no i think we roll it simultaneously versus test occurs simultaneously okay cool um so base ob one i'm rolling eight open-ended dice yeah, it's like um, 24 offense occur in real time. And I'd like to spend the fate to reroll a traitor. Er Eric's hair dobble is the chosen one. Oh my god, Ty. <laughs> oh no. Ah, oh, it's a test. <laughs> Do you have a call on trait to break the tie? Let's you have a see. six, have Eric. My only... My oh, only oh I do have a six, uh, but this is uh, suasion. I don't open... I don't, I don't, um, with the... They're pretty big people. Surely they have a fate. Uh, they probably do have fate and persona. Uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I don't have a call on. Um, uh, well, let me let me spend my fate here for this. Nope. Uh, <laughs> ah, still a tie. Still uh, a tie. So, so it, the, I mean, it, the problem is neither of us are really a defender here. Um, I mean, so one, one of you is instigating, right? Yeah, uh, you instigated Father Dimitri. But, but they're trying to convince me of something as well. Like if yeah. this was a great suasion test, I would have, like, it would just be against their will. But now it, it became a 
uh, versus test because they wanted to convince me. So what happens in a versus test? Near, the versus near. test goes. Versus we, test goes to the defender. Okay. But oh, it does. That, I thought. That but that, that doesn't really apply here. So I guess we do a yeah. second versus test based on the route. Let's just do torchbearer style. No, no, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. I think what Niren is saying is that because you started it, even though you're both trying to convince someone of something, that makes you. Well, what I'm it. saying is that that's like like suasion. If if a suasion test like with the attack, like usually the reason why suasion test isn't a, a versus test is for that reason, right? I mean, let, let's let's put it this way. When they arrived, they weren't like, ah, yes, the chosen one. Good. We must immediately start trial by fire, and he must walk through broken glass. This is decreed by Avatar. They just walked in and sat their asses down, and you came in and was like, so we should be supportive and not do the whole trial by fire thing. And when they counter with, maybe we should do the other thing instead, they're technically the defender in that instance. So what Niren is saying is that they win. In this instance, mechanically. I'm not convinced that they're the defender. Because the thing is that if they were the defender, it would just be a suasion test against their will. No, but yeah. they are the defender in a situation that you instigated. They just happened to have a... They defended by having the a reason. Counter. The reason why there was this test in the first place was because you were trying to get them to see your side of something, is I think the point. The status uh, quo being that they want to proceed with tests. Yeah, Tygo's the defender applies to versus tests. So there has to be someone who's a defender in a versus test, not just a suasion against them. Right. No, I know, but so usually, basically, yeah. what I'm saying is usually there's a more clear defender, but that's fine. That's a this is a little murky. Um, I, I hear you on that. Okay. Uh, and then, Yeah, and with no call on traits or, and we both failed our fates, then that's what it is. Okay. Seems reasonable. So, um... Ooh, so I like a tense discussion goes like, no, we will proceed with our tests. And at that point, uh, Count Ronald comes in. The door opens. Yeah. What's up? Swan in the, his house. I probably stride over to they're, some... They're like of... a little like angry, you know, there's kind of like heated as you come in. Yeah, I assume that like... at least one person is standing up with their arms on the table. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and they're like... in the Olex room oh. and just find a good bottle of alcohol and just pour myself a drink and head over to the table. Yeah. Oh, Count Ronald, please. Um, Your Eminence, take a seat. I'm We're just sitting. discussing you. I'm already sitting when he says oh, that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I move we quickly. We were just discussing you. Fantastic. Perhaps what's more important to discuss is what resources you have to lend towards this effort here. I believe there must be some kind of miscommunication. We no, were there is no miscommunication. You are in an active war zone where we are fighting bandits. Either you will help aid, or you will be in some serious trouble with those bandits in rather short time. I understand that Father Sertova here has sent you to judge me in some way, but... Either I am the chosen one of Abadar, or I am not, and I am not here to quote scripture to you. I am here to fight a war and do Abadar's good works. In other words, get on the road or get out of the way. You march behind me or you march in the other direction, and you don't want to be my enemy. Are you trying to persuade them? Here? Yeah, I'm trying to persuade them that like this is nonsense. I have much more important things to do, and you could be helping me do them. Hmm. Swan laying down the you law. You are clerics of Abadar. You have resources. You have magic powers. It's time. Well, their inclination of a failure to persuade here would be that they will just be like in a in like a guffaw, just like pack up their things and like leave. They'd be like, "Fine, I mean, that's fine with me. I didn't invite them." I know, but like that's on the line here, and right. They're like, sounds great. I love kissing on other people's dreams. So I'm not going to help here specifically because otherwise I'll be bound by your failure. And if this fails, I'm just going to pray for a miracle. So I don't want to be bound by your failure and unable yeah. to pray for a miracle. Sure. Yeah. So I'm um, like what, rolling persuasion. Yeah. Is it versus their will? Uh, right. Yeah, it's versus their. I'm sorry, it's four. They're they will four, huh? Yeah. Oh. Um, they mention. Uh, 
I guess I guess there'd be like Your Eminence. I feel like you treat like you're. We are greatly uh, greatly displeased with the amount of respect that you've shown us. That's not the display that we would have come to expect from someone like you, from someone from the Swan family. I am no a less. little busy trying to save the lives of everyone in this fort, and whenever I turn around, someone wants to use me for something, or is attempting to undermine someone else, and I'm a little tired of it, so please excuse my lack of manners, but I am quite busy trying to save lives and spread the good word. Uh, All right, make, make the this is where the dice go. I... Okay, I have a five persuasion. Ready for this, people at home? This is min max right here. I need, I can't, like, difficult. I'm sorry, routine tests do nothing for me anymore to advance my persuasion. Uh, and a difficulty four is the minimum possible. So I am going to fork nothing and use all three of my persona points on this to give myself eight dice. There you go. Cool. I will live or die and by the you're gonna get shafted like me, rolling eight dice against Eric six, and he manages to get a success. No, get fucked! Oh, God. oh! Fuck, Swan is back in the house, and I'm on fire. And I am gonna go ahead and spend that fate and just yeah, get wrecked. <laughs> six successes, but also you can roll again. You All right, six successes. Ex if you do six exclamation point when you're rerolling, I know. AP to a good role playing. Yeah, yeah, I am good at role playing, and yeah, yeah, that that was definitely role playing and not just rolling dice. Yep. My fate, my my persuasion fate is now nine fate and six persona. So, just need some of those deeds points to come down. Um, we can have a, a gray shaded persuasion there. All right, so um, yeah, while I think this is happening, I think I want to pray for like. Uh, a, like, sign. Why would you do this? Why would you do? I would, I would, all, the sign is happening right now. Reward your faith, basking in the glory of me being like, join me or get up and walk home. And they're like, okay, maybe there's some good work to do here. I hear. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I was gonna get to. They're like, yeah, sure. they like all like. As, when you do that, like when you say that shit, they like immediately like the ones who were standing just like immediately take down and like sit down. They're like, okay, <laughs> like they are, they are really on board. <laughs> Of like, what do you need to be the chosen one? And they're like, oh, check mark right there. <laughs> yeah, right. No, exactly. No. <laughs> is it wrong that I want the mighty duck slow clap here? It's like, I think. Uh, yeah. I think they're like, is. like, oh, but we need to tell you some things about these tasks. You're like, no, I'm going to tell you something. I'm in the middle of a fucking siege. I am doing too many things right now. You need to calm your sit your butt in that chair and listen, or fucking leave. I don't have time for this shit. And they were like. Okay, I you, think when, just, when, uh, de definitely displaying some leadership qualities here. Not afraid to stand up for what he believes in. He's dealing okay. <laughs> like this is okay. <laughs> when Count Swan like begins this, like Demetrius is just like sweating and like yeah. so weird, and then like he, like really gets going, and Demetrius is like, oh, oh damn, yeah, oh damn, <laughs> it's just like, oh man, mm. awesome, man. It's yeah. nice putting yourself in an extreme risk. Just to hope that you succeed on a super critical test. Yeah. So they're like, what can... So I guess they probably uh, ask you, like, so what What can we do for you? Have you brought any bodyguards or church holy men with you? No. The faith of Abadar is the only protection that we need. Well, I assume the faith of Abadar comes with a generous stipend. Resources flowing through this fort could... <clears throat> convince the local Erastilians to convert. They wish to be left alone, but I'm going to do the, my best in three days' time to convince them that civilization is the path to go, that trade through this land and peace would increase their local happiness, give them the benefits of civilization, at a roads, hospitals, access to doctors and medicine, education, not so that they can become great scholars, but so that their children can learn the best about soil conditions, planting, crop rotation, things they need to survive, the building blocks of civilization. All of these things could greatly benefit them. 
and money will benefit them most of all. If you could find a way to divert some church funds here, perhaps send for some bodyguards, temple guards as it is, perhaps we might set up a small shrine to begin converting the faithful. Outside the fort, but not too far outside the fort. Um, so this sounds like another test here. You're going to convince them to, to try to push them for some aid here. Uh, yes. The specific aid I'm looking for is for them to bring money, resources, and men to the area to set up like a small church of Abadar. And then under the pretext of bringing men, that will give us more military forces, but it'll also be like, hey, local Aristilians, Look at this cool new guy. So this is a guy. versus test. And cuz right, they're cool. Um this is why. I think what they're going to do here is they're going to try to convince you otherwise. They're going to be like, "Well, your eminence, I a central tenet of Abadarian philosophy is frugality. Doing the most with little as possible." Um I'm going to help Count Swan by saying um the Lord Abadar keeps his money in preparation for what is to, have, to come. If there is a time to use resources, it is at the call of he who was chosen by the Lord who holds the key. Um, and I'd like to help with suasion, uh, which would give you two extra dice because... Perfect. Sounds great. And exponent five. They... Um... The, the auditors mention how, um, while it sounds well and good to uh, establish a church here, frankly, we just cannot afford it in the current political landscape of Brevoy. All, all of the resources and all of the men, will, we need them in, in the capital, especially until after the king's moot. And I'm not, uh, if, if oh. I may be so frank with you, your, your eminence... I don't see much profit coming from these lands. You're so wrong. Look around you. The trade roads through here are underutilized, but provide a more direct route to the south and, of course, to the north. Running a gauntlet around this land costs time, money, energy. More guards must be hired. A healthy population here securing the area will save much but more importantly, we'll enrich the local people, and finally, we'll reduce overhead. Most oh no, people. no doubt. That's not that's that's not the no, matter no at doubt, hand. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, no, it, un, undoubtedly, that is that would that that would uh, secure uh, you know let the trade flow and 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 bring uh, money and wealth and prosperity and Abadarian principles uh, to here. But that requires a significant capital expenditure. Capital that we simply do not have at this present moment. Dice. Yeah, yeah I think dice, it's time. dice time. I'm not there, but can I argue, like, can I jockey for advantage on JP's behalf by mentioning something in the fiction? Whose behalf? Uh, yeah. AP. A oh, AP. <laughs> you said JP. You definitely did say what? JP. Wow. Well, okay. Well, I do watch role playing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So what I was just going to comment that maybe, um, as this is a versus test, uh, add one to the obstacle for uh, for the um, these preachers for the uh, incredulity of talking about frugality while wearing exquisite clothing. <laughs> yeah. It's not versus. I mean, yes, it's versus, right? So, it is hmm? versus. Yeah, um, I would like to fork command. Did we decide whether you could oratory three or four people? You could, but um, I ex can. You, why? Why command? Because I'm like I literally was just got done telling them like this is how it is. You know, you work for me. This is my plan. Command is military, though. Um. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, I'd love to fork merchant wise because I've been talking some mad merchant. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'd also love to fork supplier wise because I've been talking mad supply. Yeah, uh, both uh, of those. And accounting, accounting for sure, um, <laughs> as well. Uh, All right, so those, so those are three, three um, forks, and then two aid dice. Four, five, six, 
Seven, eight, nine. I'm rolling nine. You're rolling nine? Yeah. Now they're helping each other, and they also have all of those yeah. things. Yeah, <laughs> these guys are merchants. Uh, but I had, to, I had to improve. Uh, I had to... I did, uh, you increased my obstacle, didn't you? That's so why I did op two. Do, it doesn't matter. You got I fucking... <laughs> what the fuck, uh, guys? Am I fucking hacking? What's up, Umbra? I'm gonna uh, spend a fate. Look at, what the... the guys, this, this shit is insane. These guys well, are ridiculous. Difficult this is why we would like to mention to the viewers. Uh, check out, uh, Eric Volgaris is presently a major stockholder in Roll20. Um, Apparently, yeah. Uh, I, I have I have the Roll20 hacks where I can roll nine dice and get eight successes. It's okay, he's spending them all now so that I can completely crush this stag lord in the second half of this uh, show. Yeah. Uh, you're least... fucking late! I, oh my god, You thank god these weren't your bow skills. Oh, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, this wasn't him shooting me. Holy Don't shit, worry. dude. Now I only need one difficult test persuasion to get better at it. So thanks, AP, for failing this roll. Um, so no aid, no aid is coming your way from from the Abadarians. Uh, other than other than good wishes, they they think this is a great idea, but they just can't invest in it. Think of these right. guys as investors. They just they're like, this is great, but like this is this is too long term for our balance sheets. Come to us when you have a more solid business. Yeah, plan. when you when you dispatch of these bandits and and you and you uh, resolve yourself of this siege, um, I think you might. Uh... Man, I have to get a new router. I have to get um, a new router. That's that's all I gotta say about this. Can My I router. make some kind of last? each effort to convince them to fight personally are these people like father sertova and they can use like belief magic or are they literally just people who write things on paper no. my magic is pretty rare okay, yeah, well, yeah. They, don't, they don't use belief magic here's what i'm gonna do i want to this is where i want to call on a miracle to like turn these guys from being like uh eh, we like what you're doing but whatever to be like oh my god this guy is you're me. you're bound by his failure you helped he did help Oh, that's true. You're right. Yeah, you're bound by his failure. He helped. No, you're yeah, right. Think of another way of doing it. And yeah. also, not for nothing, we've already gotten two hours in. We're not to the duel. It's probably going to take more than two hours. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, I still have to talk to Mason. And he still has to talk to Mason, apparently. Um, well, it's okay. Well, we can, maybe maybe we, we, we stop there and we go over to talking to Mason. Is that cool? Yep. Sure. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm be looking for the, the two other lords of this place anyway. I yeah, guess maybe you we just, like, run into him. Uh, <clears throat> you there. I don't recognize yeah. you. You don't look <laughs> like one of the hunters from around here. Nope. It's true. Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, Mason, like, they, <laughs> they take off their straw hat and, and, and give, like, a, a curt bow, uh, recognizing, of course, that you are a man of stature. Um, my lord, you must be either Lord Sertova or Lord Swan. That's Count Swan and Father Sertova. Lord is technically appropriate as well, actually. My apologies. I meant no offense. I take it then that you are uh, His Eminence Count Ronald Swan. That is correct. Are you a He's messenger from the capital then? I am not. I'm sorry to disappoint. It is my good honor to I'm just like, the capital has been disappointing me quite a bit lately. <laughs> Who are you in that case? Uh, merely a traveler, uh, my good lords. Merely a traveler looking for something in this region. Um, I've come to offer my services, as they may be of use to you. I've come to understand from your uh, other esteemed peer, um, his Grace, Sir Onan Solston. I roll my eyes and gesture towards my room, and I'm just like, come with me. Let's hear about whatever deal you have made with Onan Solston. I'll, uh, I'll follow. I'll say, uh, yes, I'm interested to hear what services you have to offer. <laughs> I sense trouble, but I follow. <laughs> I mean, I and I purposely omitted his title when speaking of him. So, and people wonder why we still don't get along. I mean, we don't get along. You just think that we do. I don't, no, I don't think that we do. You still I, don't. I, I, I follow you and sit where you point me to. Uh, 
You know, it's been a while since I've ordered somebody to get me a drink. Lately, I've just been giving people the drinks, so I'll probably be like, what was your name again? I'm called Mason. Uh, Mason, can you bring us that bottle from over there, and then let's get you a drink. Suddenly, your eminence. <laughs> so I take the bottle from his hand, and then like pour a drink for Demetrius and myself, and then one for him, and I swivel the table around to his side. Mason, what deal has Onan Solston offered you? And let's be up front here. Onan Solston is a man who can't afford to pay for his horse without the church stepping in. So I'm curious as to what he has offered a swordsman like yourself to come out here. His grace was good enough to essentially suggest that my talents may be appreciated around here, but we have yet to conduct any official business. I see. Um, Is he? Are you? Do you have a sword on you? Wait, do you look like a sword? I don't. I don't. I, oh, well, I, I have a sword, stick, but it's not a quarter staff. I'm still curious what it is you do. Um. Well, I. Uh, I guess. I guess I would be best suited with divulging some secrets. I am a. Uh, I am a learned person. I was uh, schooled in the art of war at the Aldori Academy of Restov. Uh, I also but... learned from the Aldori dueling. Unfortunately, I'm not blade master by any means. Me neither, sir. My good, uh, my good lord. I don't believe I could hold a sword without severing my fingers. That's <laughs> count. Your eminence. Indeed. You seem to be dancing around it quite a bit. What is it actually that we'd be hiring you to do? Well, two things. I offer you two services beyond um, merely what the rest of the rabble outside would offer. I am an accomplished tactician and an experienced planner of battles. I know logistics, I know tactics, I know how to motivate, and I know how to control the men. Or at least I know how to advise people who control the men. Secondly, I was schooled with one of the great masters. Consequently, I work the deeper layers of the world. You're a dark sorcerer then. I, uh, mean, <laughs> I, I, I look away, <laughs> like, I avert my eyes as you say that. I'm like, shit. Like, I, under the table, I'm slowly starting to unsheath my sword with as little noise as possible. I, I what mean, sorcery I, exactly do you practice? <clears throat> Blood magic? Summoning demons, perhaps? Alchemy first, then sorcery? What's next? I am very sorry to have given you offense, my uh, my esteemed lord, my count. Um, I do not work blood magic. I have not yet been in contact with blood magic, although I have read of it. I work a different kind of sorcery. I work the world layers. I speak the truth that no one can hear. I, uh, I think uh, Demetrius stands up um, and he, he seems pretty intrigued. Um, I, when you stand up, I stand up too, just like reflexively. Yeah, yeah, I immediately and, say, sit down. I uh, sit down. To and, Mason. and Demetrius will like sort of walk around and he'll, he'll say, um, I have experience with powers beyond mortal ken but not of the type of which you speak however i have heard many a charlatan make such claim can you back them up in any way for myself and the count for i can think of quite a many uses for a sorcerer on my side or should i say count swan's side this is maybe the only time since we've met, albeit that hasn't been that long, but this is the only time you see maybe a bit of bite enter Mason's gaze as they look back at you. And they say, as a sorcerer, particularly the sorcery 
is not to be used by anyone. It is not a tool. It is destruction. There is nothing orderly about what I practice. It is a maelstrom. It can be directed, but never curtailed and never controlled. I would gladly offer you my services. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, but never make the mistake, but never make the mistake of believing that those powers are just for show or for me to demonstrate for anyone. Lest, not, you, invite, <laughs> lest you invite doom on yourself. Do uh, not mistake me for a conjurer of cheap tricks. I think Demetrius just like sighs and he says, How's that sword coming along, Swan? Such yeah, I, I think the sword's full out from under the table and it's now resting on the table. I, I'm I'm just gonna say, say, like, I look visibly scared. Uh, I'm going to like sigh deeply and say, um, alas, claimed and potential sorcerers never seem to be able to manifest their powers in any sort of way. And then I say, uh, I look to Count Swan and I say, Count Swan has seen <laughs> the miracles that I can perform. Well, I've seen you fail at a couple too. I don't say <laughs> that. You can see it written but, on my face. But I'll and I'll say uh, I'll say um, I have seen many men who claim to do what I can do, claim to tap into forces that are unknown, but many of them seem unable to show it. I'm not sure. If I may be permitted, Father. If I were to prove these powers to you, what would you then offer me a non charlatan for his services? Uh, okay, this is this is where Father Demetrius gets like very, very serious and looks you in the eye uh, and he says Salvation. <laughs> <laughs> do you wear uh, do you wear an icon of Abaddon? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he's in his full finery right now because he was just meeting with the arbiter or the auditors. Uh, auditors. Yeah. Um, and he'll, he'll say he'll say salvation, and then he'll turn around and say, um, "Shelter from the storm that is to come." Um, yeah. So I'm going to invoke risk taker and arrogant in this case. I do, I I do want to not use my sorcery because it is highly dangerous but this guy is pushing my buttons and although I know I could potentially set fire to this fort if I fuck it up I am going to stand up and I am going to give this guy the demonstration he wants. I want to I wanna stop you as you're standing up because I'm going to stand up with my sword as well and say, Mason you seem to be in a fine mood right now are you about to show us your sorcery? As you requested why don't you come outside with me? I have a task that I'd like to set you to. I follow you. Uh, so I'm going to like wrap one arm around you and just kind of like <laughs> hold my sword in front of you. Just like, Mason, you can see that we have more people here than we have bunks for, yes? Um, I look at you attempting and failing to mask my discomfort at you touching me. Um, and I'm like, yes, yes, your, uh, my eminence, your eminence. And so we must build more housing for them. We must provide for our fellows. You understand. I would hate for anyone to go out in the cold. So would they, I'm guessing. Indeed. <sighs> if you are not a dark sorcerer, would you account yourself as a good man? I would account myself as a good person. So you would say people. that providing housing for these people would be a just and noble act then. Surely something that would help prove your worth around here. We can speak yeah. later on your tactical prowess and what battles you've been to, but and, and now we're like outside the front gate and I'm gesturing to like a flat field that's nearby. Someone will need to work this field to provide a foundation for a new building. Can you move the earth, burn it up for me? Something to show me your destructive powers. Destructive powers that can be put toward creation. 
Uh, yeah, so so I don't suppose you could summon up a building for me. I'm like laughing, but I'm actually like, yeah, it'd be really awesome if you could summon up a building. <laughs> That's gonna I save me a lot of time. Very closely. So I, uh, I I I give you like a, a strained smile because I'm again I'm very uncomfortable with like being touched by someone who's obviously my better because I'm afraid I give offense to you by allowing yeah, it. I mean, you have um, given offense to me, but don't worry, you might fix it. So uh, so I, I look to you and I say, well. If you want me to conjure up rooms for the people, that would display go a great way to display my non-existent skill with hammer and nail. Uh, <laughs> but you well, asked me for a display of somewhat other. I just want to see some magic. Yes, sure. <clears throat> Show me earth and flame then, and I like push him out in front of me, and just mm. like lay my sword on his shoulder, like next to his neck. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, Jesus. why are you so mean? Please tell so me everybody that. sees wow, you do what? this, then everybody yeah. sees. You might have noticed, but uh, Swan has had a fucking like terrible time with sorceress in the past. He's treated everyone he suspected to be a sorcerer like a piece of shit until they prove otherwise. Please tell me that Demetrius is carrying a sword. Oh uh, no, he doesn't carry a sword. He but probably... apparently, everyone sees this, so mm. I'll come over. He What's going on? Yeah, here? there's this commotion. Impromptu execution. No, no. We're about to be treated to magical powers and sorcery put to good use. Is that so? Show us, Mason. Show us your power. Uh, I, uh, I not. Take I some risks, buddy. I take a subtle step oh, to God, the side. Let this one fail. That'd be so cool. Yeah, I take a subtle step to the side so the sword doesn't rest directly on my neck. Sure. Um, but just like rests on my shoulder instead. And I, I nod to, um, to Sir Onan and I say, my apologies, my lord, for what's about to happen. Don't be afraid. Coralites uh, don't know fear. And, uh, he immediately and I immediately wails a steel test and runs away. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> I want to, uh, I want to uh, like yank the blade from, um, from, Sir, uh, from Lord Swan's hand and the blade from uh, Sir Onan's scabbard and like just have them collide in midair uh, and be bound together. And to accomplish this intent, I will cast the bind spell and pray I don't fuck it up. I mean, I've offer... asked you for fire and earth, and instead you ruin my favorite sword. No, and not at all. I don't ruin it. No, I, uh... yank, I yank, I yank it from your grasp. Okay, but we don't resist with anything. No, no, no there's no resistance. Okay, not unless you uh, act. Uh, to to be perfectly frank, uh, there might be something. My hand is on my sword in its scabbard, so I'm, you know, I, like when it starts to get yanked. You get fantasia, uh, you're like, ah. Huh? <laughs> physically good. Yeah, no, Fantasia is the best way of putting it. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Um, so, so to, to describe what actually happens as I as I do this, um, and and I would cast like something with fire, but I my it's my understanding that we're inside a wooden fort. No, he just put us out front. We're like out front. you, you, but he marched you through the fort. Okay. So yeah. everyone case, was like, "What the fuck is going on?" In that case, then it's it's much better that I that I don't do that, but instead, and I I will do what is asked of me then. That seems much more appropriate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cast a spell that is much more difficult because yay. Yes. I hope it's like oh man, this is gonna be hilarious. I mean, this is just I. What I'm expecting is that you fail the sorcery roll. Ronald Swan cuts you down in a moment. Uh, I cut him down in response, and, and then the whole game is over. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> like. <laughs> Thanks for playing, everybody. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, Everyone's dead man. again, apparently. Well, yeah. it summons up a miracle and brings me back to life, and I cut <laughs> you down in your shock. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast sorcery. I'm going to fork astrology by like uh, by uh, ah, ah, ah. by. Uh, no way that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Um, astrology. I'm going, uh, I'm going to fork. Um, I'm going to fork symbolism as I draw like. Um, as I draw my inspiration from like the old sigils and the old scrolls that I have uh, crippled my my secrets off of, and I'm going to use secrets wise because that's relevant to my idiom. Um, so with that, uh, and then I'm going to cast carefully. So I'm going to take my time doing this so as to not kill. To, uh, so I don't kill these people. 
So we're just like waiting around, like watching, like when is it gonna happen? <laughs> yeah. So what happens is you you place the sword on on my shoulder, and my neck seems to go loose for a moment, like my head sacks a bit, and then I start speaking in babble, and it's like this. It's a very it's a loud whisper, if that makes sense, uh, like spoken with multiple voices. Yeah. And it just babble tongue. It means nothing, right? It's like alam langu lele or something like that. And um, then I'm going to, to attempt to like conjure a sheath of flame, just like just um, like swing my arm like the hand of a clock and just let the, the air erupt into fire. Um, do you know where did the spell binding is in the book? Uh, yeah, so this is not fire binding, this is fire fan. Fire fan is on page 212. Rather than mess with the swords, it's going to do as requested and yeah. show me fire and earth. Yeah. A tribute, a token of earth and water. Ah, yeah, we uh, here we go. So you'll find plenty down there. Okay, well, the good part, the good news is that it's only uh, up three. Yeah. Uh, starting out. Um, it's an up spell, though, so, you know. But let's see about it. Here we go. Whoa! Just barely. Fucking danger zone right there, buddy. Yeah. So much red. Oh, yeah. At least one of those. Yeah. The last one's a four, though. That would be your astrology die. So you're okay. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I speak this babble. And in the in the TV show version of this, uh, like the subtitles would read something to the equivalent of uh, of uh, within this man asks for fire. Little does he know that within his line burns a fire and an ambition greater than he himself could ever fathom. Um, that's what the uh, that's what the subtitles say. And in pronouncing this secret, I render I render reality and work my will and uh, conjure flame from nothing. Um, don't forget, uh, your sorcery is open ended. Um, so if yeah, you, if you check the box um, next to sorcery on your character sheet, it will automatically open end. For Does you. um, thank you. Yeah. Um, when when <clears throat> when I see this. Uh, this flame shoot out, and I'm flame sure like, of a doom. everyone is a around them, around us is like, like well, I'm guessing like freaked out probably, because uh, this is like a big spectacle. Um, I'm gonna go out and I'm going to like raise um, Mason's hand in my own, like like a triumphant, you know, uh, you know like a, a, a champion boxer or something like. Being, if I can change. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, um, so I, I raise his hand and I say um, to the crowd, um, sort of like letting my voice boom out um, as I probably would have like from the pulpit. Um, and I say, uh, now hear this people of uh, what's what do we have? Green Swap. belt. Green belt. Oh, people of the green belt. That's what I said. Now hear this people of the green belt. We have the power of gods and I like sort of gesture to myself and to Onan uh, and the power of old sorcery to warp time and reality. What has this stag Lord? What has his people before the might of ours? The forces that array to, to end civilization in this land have no match against Abadar's faithful. And this magic, this power, is only proof of that. Count Swan shall lead us to victory. Um, and I'm looking for uh, an oratory test. I'm thinking that having magic at our disposal is enough of a change in circumstance to try to get these guys on our side one more time. It's yeah. definitely a change. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, well, hold on a second. What did you just say? You Wait. said Count Swan shall lead us to victory. Yeah. So, I'm right next to you, buddy. I will definitely aid in this by a simple matter of me standing there with the sword triumphantly, my hand on Mason's back. Like, uh, yes, we will go to victory together with might and magic. Yeah. Uh, so I'm real, I've got oratory. Um, I'm hoping to uh, to help myself <clears throat> here with. Um, Civilization wise, uh, ambition wise, uh, suasion, because I brought in the whole god thing. 
Um, and then I'm hoping to jockey for uh, a positional advantage die from the fact that I'm making this after probably the most incredible spectacle most of these people have ever seen in their lives. <laughs> and you have an aid die for me for oratory. Oh, correct. What do you think, Eric? I'm, I think civilization-wise is a little bit of a stretch, but other, I think you're fine with everything else. Okay, so we'll do ambition-wise, suasion, um, and I'll get uh, two extra dice from Swan and from the situation. Mm -hmm. I'll help you too. I'll, I'll speak up as you raise my hand, um, just like in, in affirmation of what you're saying, uh, because I do want the, ador uh, the adoration of these people. So I, um, I, uh, I look to, to the people as, as you say this, and I... I let loose like I, I speak I help with great masters wise by proclaiming that I'm I am the student of uh, of, of uh, the great master Harkon um, I'm, I'm uh, the prize pupil of the great Harkon um, I've, I've come bringing law and I've come bringing fire mm. do you um okay I think I think for the group it's ob three right sure uh, Rekic average, can, uh... Rekic can try to make it harder for me if he wants because I did blatantly like say like cut swan yeah um i this isn't me orating to the crowd or anything but i immediately follow it with count swan is not the only one in charge here father satova just um, the only one that matters onin i don't say <laughs> that but i'm definitely thinking uh that. so i guess uh we'll call it uh, an ob four then because uh of uh the hindrance Boom. Lots nice. of dice for the oratory. Yeah. Looking um, good. Okay. Yeah, I think I think people have it on your side. Um I think uh you get a nice like rousing uh cheer as we go to break. Wait, before we go to the break, I my my hand on Mason's back, I'm like, let's talk pricing. <laughs> That's the perfect cut to black perfect. on that. All yeah. right. Uh, we'll be back in five minutes.